Hey y'all and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be covering two important brushes, the fill brush and the scrape brush. Now these brushes are very useful and they're both kind of like the flatten brush, but they work um, a little differently and you use them in different uh, ways for different reasons. So let's get started talking about the fill brush. All right, now to really show off the fill brush, I need to kind of pull away some mesh. So I'm gonna make two deep cuts in the mesh here. In fact, we'll make that a little deeper. And then we'll do the same thing over here. All right, so now we have two deep cuts in our mesh. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab the fill brush, which does not have a hot key. You just get it from the toolbar or over on the left-hand side. And we'll take a look at what this does. Now, on a surface that is equal with the brush plane, it's going to do absolutely nothing. There is no information there for it to do. But in these two deep cuts we've made, if I use the fill brush, what's actually happening is the mesh is being brought back up try to refill in the area that I cut away. So if we look at what that looks like now, it's kind of this area that's trying to bring the vertices that have been pushed down back up to flat with the brush plane. So as I go over that area, you can see now it's kind of like pulling it back in and trying to make it flatter. Now it's not going to fully succeed, but it would get you close enough that if you smoothed it out, you really might not be able to tell that uh, there was a cut there. And then we have the opposite of the fill brush, which is the deepen brush. So while the fill brush will try to restore the vertices to where they were at, the deepen brush tries to push them further away. So in fact, let me actually break or make my brush a little larger and then I will use the deepen brush and we can watch these vertices get pushed further and further away into the hole uh, where we pulled away the mesh using the clay strips brush. All right, so the fill brush will try to restore vertices to where they were at and try to fill in areas that have been cut away and the deepen brush will push those vertices further uh, away from their original position. So uh, this is one of those brushes that is um, useful, but not something that I use a lot of just because um, generally I'll realize all oh, that was cut was too deep and I will try to undo that and maybe lower the strength. But if you want to create some like rolling patterns or, or try to give a, a good effect, these brushes can come in really really handy. There's a reason they exist. I don't use them a whole lot, but they are brushes that uh, are part of the default for a reason. So they're pretty good, which I guess, which I guess is just a weird way to say, like, I'm too inexperienced with these brushes to tell you in what uh, capacity they would be used. So whatever, I guess that's the brush. There you go. Use it how you see fit. Now let's go on and we will talk about the scrape brush. All right, now the scrape brush is like the flatten brush. Basically, I want you to think of the scrape brush as if you had real clay and you were needing to just pull some clay away without really flattening out the area or trying to you know, remove too much or inflate or anything like that. You just wanted to, hey, you know, I need to smooth out this area and just kind of pull clay away that doesn't belong there the scrape brush is the tool that you would use. Now the scrape brush does not have a hotkey, but just like with all of these brushes that don't have a hotkey, you can go up to edit and preferences and set those hotkeys for yourself. So we're gonna grab the scrape brush here and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. All right, now I'm just gonna pull away this mesh. All right, and I'm just scraping it. But what you can see is that it's not really flattening it because there is still a curvature to that section. It's just not as curved as it was before because you've pulled some of that mesh away. And so the actual Blender documentation reads that the scrape brush is like the flatten brush, but it only brings vertices that are above the sculpt plane down 
uh, to match the rest of it. So if your sculpt plane setting is the area, wherever you start your stroke, let's say here, anything that's uh, like above that section, it's going to scrape down, but it's not going to affect vertices that are below that sculpt plane. Okay, and that's basically the uh, scrape brush, but the peaks brush does kind of the opposite, where it takes areas where vertices that are um, below the plane and it moves them up and away from that plane. So let's go back over one of the areas that we have sculpted with the scrape brush, and we will use the peaks brush here and just keep going over and over and over again and just watch what's happening. So it's taking these vertices that we've sculpted and we've scraped away and it's pushing them up and away from that sculpt plane. So it's giving us these kind of ridged peaks here in our, uh, in our mesh. But we can get these same effects with the draw brush or um, you know, a reversed crease brush or whatever. But this is really the um, the brush that's supposed to be used to create peaks, which is why this brush is called the Scrape and Peaks brush. So I want you to think of this brush as a finishing up tool. It's not something you do a lot of the heavy lifting in Blender with. You use this as a final touch up to, hey, I've gotten this area almost perfect. Let me just move a little bit away to, uh, you know, put some final touches on this so that it's a lot smoother of a transition. All right, I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.